are the uh, stars of uh, stage, screen, and commercial real estate in Southern California. I cannot believe the money that they represent, uh, you know, idling up here. I think you really have to take out all the old school thoughts about downtown. I've had them for many, many years. You can't deny the, the, the numbers and the, and the trends that Chris is mentioning. But it has to be organic. When you're looking at this creative type of tenant, you can't just take a big father's office take the floors, open up the ceilings, and expect them to walk in there. You just can't. You have to look at who your target is. And you're looking at this young millennial crowd. They want something that's, they want something with an edge to it, okay? When I first got into this crazy business, it's where, where does the CEO live? So if wherever the CEO is, that's where the headquarters is gonna be. And today I think there's been a fundamental shift on where we look to put a facility or an office and that is, where is the talent? Downtown Los Angeles is getting a lot of tours from companies on the west side in that tech and media uh, space. You know, there's that old saying, one hot day, don't make a summer, but you know, there are companies that are coming down here. Is it a trend? The looking is a trend, so that's happening. Amazon did a deal in Santa Monica, net new 100,000 feet, but you know, those are the industries that are really driving growth and they want different space. In a place like this, you know, you could still go out into the outlier geography and, and find kind of interesting office space. In downtown, it just, it becomes very appealing to these users. So what happened in the south of market San Francisco is you had this huge creative office buzz, but it had to be low rise and wood and brick and exposed nails and whatever else you thought was interesting. And it would never go vertical because that just was not going to happen. And then guess what? It's gone vertical in the last year. Most of the offices, people are taking less space. Law firms that we work with now, believe it or not, are going more to singular, single size offices, even for partners. So that translates into less space. And then the other space trend we see too, especially with prof professional service firms and law firms, is more meeting area, more common area, more softscape area, where it's welcoming meetings and conversations instead of private offices. In dealing with a lot of our major tenants that are leases, you know, are coming up, they are all taking a look at how they function in the workplace, and they know that they can't function the same way with the existing build-outs and still attract the same employees, because those employees, like Chris was talking about, are getting attracted by the Googles and the, the Microsofts and the Yahoos and these other companies. And so there's a battle for talent. And that battle is going to be fought in how they use their space and where they locate their offices. I think the technology creative space thing, it, it's real and it's here. And I, I've got partners in New York that tell me, is it a fad? And it's not for the reasons that Chris pointed out because it's the way people want to live. And you know, we're making a big bet in Playa Vista. We're going to build 200,000 feet of spec creative space from the ground up. I'm not sure it's ever been done. So we're making a big bet on it. Well, I, you know, I think there's two ways to make money in real estate. It's either you are uh, undertaking a market play or an asset play. I think for us, we believe we have the best of both worlds in downtown LA. So we're certainly bullish on the prospects for downtown. I, I don't think you can underestimate downtown either. If I found a nice creative office space downtown, I would definitely look at it. I, don't, I think you can't uh, underestimate traffic in this city. That's the one thing that everybody talks about. A big apartment building is uh, on Wilshire and Vermont is selling for $310 million because you can get somewhere in 10 minutes on the metro. You can get to Hollywood in 10 minutes. You can get to downtown in 10 minutes. But I, I don't think it's just downtown. I think what's happening, you see a phenomenon around the country, what happened in the Meatpacking District in New York or urban areas, it's the live, work, play. People don't want to drive out to Calabasas where I live and commute um, like they used to. They want to live, work, and play. And so a big question is what happens when the boomers retire? Is there going to be a collapse in housing demand? I argue the answer is no, because there's been a fundamental change. Uh, we, we really, really believe um, that the city is going back to how it operated in the 40s uh, with the red car. We think people that's how people want to live, that's how they want to work. And the one thing I want to point out that wasn't pointed out earlier, whether we like it or not, the, <laughs> the millennial generation is bigger than the baby boomer generation. And with immigration and births, they're going to tell us what's hip and what's cool and how to live. So you can either you know, be cynical about it and say, oh, I don't believe it, or you know, I'm in the business of trying to make money, and we're going to try to be ahead of that curve.
hey, look, things are changing here in downtown, and, and we need to be you know, cognizant of what's coming and be what's next and not you know, worry so much about the here and now, although I'll, you got to do deals. I just have a hard time getting excited about the lack of rental growth. Um, and, you know, I think that the comment about an asset play is interesting because you never say never because there's always, you know, every real estate deal is its own investment, right? So I would never say never, but I just, I've seen this going on for a long time and I'm not sure that 50,000 residential people living here is going to drive office rents. Um, but I would never say I would never invest in downtown LA.